I, I suppose the reasons for these are multiple. And they go, they range from, on the one hand, neuroscientists, I imagine, who believe that mental disorder, like uh, in other diseases of the body, are just the expression of brain pathology. And I don't think there are many, but there will be some who are very fundamentalist about this. And the, the range goes to the other end, when people just want to be politically correct. I have seen colleagues who I know they are Christian and they go to church every Sunday, but when it comes to the patients, they behave in a neutral manner, as if they don't want to offend the patients with their religion. And I think that, you know, in between these two ends, they just being politically correct, to the one who is a fundamentalist in neuroscience, with fortunately there are not many, I think. You got the gamut in between. So the, the, this is the problem that if there was only one cause of this apparent rejection, or no, it's not rejection, exclusion is the word perhaps, more neutral, of religious uh, uh, um, concepts in psychiatry, the church, most churches, have a kind of more intellectual, theological side and a more pastoral side. And it is the pastoral side which is the important one. And funnily enough, I have discussed this with the experts in this field, they feel that many people who become priests, for example, um, go one way or the other. Not everybody within priesthood has a pastoral capacity. You know, it's one of those things. They, they notice that immediately. Whereas some priests will immediately develop a kind of pastoral side. Others rather become theologians. They are brilliant people. And one, I see this in Cambridge, and I saw that at Oxford, where the, the two universities I, I've been to all my life, that we tend to have that bias that the priests who are trained in the Oxford and Cambridge colleges tend to be intellectuals. And often they, uh, they do very good work, they write very interesting books, and they end up being bishops or things like that. But the pastoral side is not that good, because that, that's not the way it is. In, in psychiatry we have the same. Great clinicians can be very bad researchers, and vice versa. Great researchers are useless with patients. You know, I've seen that. I think that the, cons the, the obvious consequence would be a rather incomplete approach to the person. Now the W uh, 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 the, the World Psychiatric Association, the, w, the WPA, um, is telling us um, that it was Danish, who is a dear friend, and I've been with him, know him for 40 years. Or something like that. He is asking, everybody is asking, we've got to go back to the person in psychiatry. And I think they are right. What we need to explain, however, is what does it mean to go back to the person? It's not paying lip service to it, like culture. You know, you say, yes, culture is important, but nobody cares about culture. The same is with the person. The fact of the matter is that we got to explain that going back to the person means catering for all their needs, and this may include the spiritual needs and other needs as well.